Hey everyone, in case you missed it last Sunday, we're in the middle of a series all about emotion or it's called vibes, so the vibes inside. And I know this sounds a little silly and it rhymes, but I think it's such an accurate description of our internal emotional environments. And we're also talking about keeping those vibes from controlling us. And one of the emotions that shows up for everyone and tries to take over is anger. And that's what I wanna talk about tonight. And I think it's really important to talk about this emotion because it's something that we've all felt or may feel often. And the thing about anger is that it shows up in many, for many different reasons. So it sometimes anger shows up for justifiable reasons. So maybe someone may have hurt you or another person in some way, whether it's through their words or actions or intentions. Maybe it was something in the news or the media, like what happened at the Capitol on Tuesday. And sometimes anger shows up for no reason or really weird reasons. I know that happens for me a lot. Like you wake up and you just get really frustrated or annoyed. It's like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I guess I understand now why that's a phrase. <laughs> but you're not sure why you feel this way. Um, but it ends up making you feel very irritated um, to, for those with those around you, like your parents or maybe your siblings or friends, and even though they haven't really done anything, I know that sometimes I'll wake up and get super frustrated um, for no reason. It's just that I'm having a bad day and I end up taking that out on the ones that I love for no reason and it's really annoying. And <clears throat> anger is also weird because it's expressed in different ways too. If you're like me, I ex sometimes get loud or yell or even occasionally throw things if I'm really mad. <laughs> and sometimes we get quiet or shut down or give people the silent treatment. I know some of you out there are probably really good at giving your parents or maybe your siblings or friends a silent treatment. But whether our anger shows up for justifiable reasons or not, whether we get loud or quiet, anger is a really powerful emotion. It's still a hard emotion to feel and process and deal with because anger can sometimes cause a lot of hurt. Um, whether we that be hurting yourself or someone else. I think the question is, what do we do with it? What do we do with our anger? This anger that threatens to control us, to hurt us or others that we care about or our relationships with others. So tonight we're going to be focusing on the Book of Psalms. And we're in this book because you'll find 150 chapters of prayers, praises, laments, and songs of God's people. There's a lot of real and honest emotion in this book, but I want to focus specifically on Psalm 109 because this psalm was written by King David. And so you may know King David at, from the story in the Old Testament of David and Goliath to where David as a young boy went and threw a stone at um, the giant Goliath and ended up winning the battle for his people. But let's dive it right into verses one and two. So remember, so this is being written um, from King David's perspective. So he says, my God, whom I praise, do not remain silent for people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouths against me. So here David is calling out to God, begging him to answer his prayer. He describes what's going on what's going on in um, in his time and what he's dealing, going through. So people are gossiping and bad-mouthing him. Have you ever learned that someone was talking behind your back or spreading lies about you? I'm sorry if you have, because it's one of the most painful things to go through, especially if it's from a friend. I know that in middle school that happened to me and it really hurt and really took a toll on me for a while. And I think we can all, to some extent, understand why David is so angry about this. So David is rightfully mad, but what he prays next can be a little hard or weird to see in the Bible. So the next couple of verses, David begins to describe line by line um, what he thought his enemies deserved. And so we'll only focus on a few verses here because it's a little gruesome in some of them. So it says in verses 10 through 12, May his children be wandering beggars. May they be driven from their ruined homes. May no one extend kindness to him or take pity on his fatherless children. I mean, wow. Talk about being harsh. <laughs> David asked God to destroy his enemy's home to make him a beggar, to take away all of his earthly possessions, and to make sure nobody is ever nice to this man 
or his children. And now that is true anger there. You're angry enough to wish harm on others. And this is the same David who wrote in other Psalms, um, songs of praise to God, who is thank the David who is thankful for so much, who encourages us as he faces trials um, and trusts in the Lord for everything. Now I'm not bringing this up to focus on the negativity of David. But I'm bringing this up so that you can see that you're not alone in your anger and your thoughts that you have when you're angry. And if we're honest, I think we can all relate to how David is feeling in this moment. I believe we've all been so angry as to imagine not so good things happening or coming to those who have hurt us or angered us. Now, please hear, I am not talking about the extent that David mentioned, but maybe something like you wish that the person that would get a worse grade from you because you're angry that you got the grade you did in a class or you wish that they would embarrass themselves in front of their friends like they did the same thing to you and that wasn't fair or maybe they may might not make the team because you're just so angry and upset and you think that you don't deserve to not make the team and they did now i want to show you that this intensity of anger is in the bible it's in a, even in a prayer to God, someone talking straight to God. And still, you'll see here that God held space for David to come to him with brutal honesty and anger. God lets David get it all out. And then nine verses later, something changes. David refocuses on who he's speaking to, which we know in a prayer is to God. And he declares that his steadfast love is good. And then David acknowledges his own situation. I am poor and needy, and my heart is stricken within me. So let's look at these verses here. So it's Psalm 109, 21 through 22. And David says, But you, O God, my Lord, deal on my behalf for your name's sake. Because your steadfast love is good, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is stricken within me. So after David has gotten angry, after he's yelled and cursed his enemies and expressed all of his frustrations, he comes back to what he centers himself in always. So one, he centers himself in the fact that God is God, who is everlasting love and is good and kind. And two, that he himself is not perfect and free from all blame, even though bad things are happening to him and, you know, justifiably his anger is rightful. You know, people shouldn't be talking bad about him and treating him wrongly, but he acknowledges that he's not completely blameless himself. He's not perfect either. And he comes back to these two truths to center himself and to calm himself. So what do those things mean for us? Um, well, for one, we have a God who cares about us, loves us at all times and in all things, and will always always, always, always hold space for us to come to him in our honest anger and our honest emotions. And two, we're not perfect either. <laughs> we're not always going to get it right. And we're not always going to be able to let our anger, let go of our anger in the way that people expect us to. Guys, I'm not always able to let go of my anger in the way I should. And so for some of us, our anger is really strong. And we'll need to express it more than we normally do to finally let it go. But please hear that how you express your anger matters. How you express it matters. And so this can be crying out to God, to be praying to God, talking to someone we trust, writing a letter about what you're angry about, or writing a letter to the person you're angry about, and then throwing it away. Um, seeing a counselor. Maybe your anger lasts so long that maybe you need to go and talk to a professional about it. And confront, maybe confronting the person you're upset with. And there's so much more things, ways that you can express it in a healthy way. But one thing we have to remember is that anger is not a bad emotion. When we label emotions as good or bad, it gets in the way of being able to understand and deal with them. Because our emotions tell us something. And especially when we feel anger, it tells us something about what's going on inside of us. And so in Psalm 4, 4, King David instructs us, be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts and be silent. So in other, <laughs> other words, 
take time to reflect upon or focus on what's going on inside of you and why the anger is there. Did something, someone do or say something to you that made you angry? Was it a grade or a performance that you're upset about? Or are you just having a bad day and you're upset about nothing at all? And whatever it is, take time to notice it and feel it. And do not simply react to the way you're feeling, such as sending a text you can't take back or saying a mean thing to someone because you're hurt and you want the other person to feel that too. And take time to cool off so you can speak truthfully with love to the other person that you're angry with. Don't let anger take over. Don't let it fuel you into saying or doing things that could end up hurting you or another person that you care about. So here's the bottom line for tonight, guys. God gives you space to express your anger so that your anger doesn't have the power to control you. Remember, you're not alone in this feeling. Even King David, the person that God anointed to be on the throne of Israel, the man after God's own heart felt the intensity of this anger. Take time to talk to God, a trusted friend, or mentor and give yourself time to feel. Take time to reflect on what's going on inside and why the anger's there. And don't simply react to the feeling, to feeling that way before processing what you're actually feeling. Because God gives you space to express your anger so that your anger doesn't have the power to control you. Okay, have fun in small groups.